And just because it's raining doesn't mean that we cannot go on an adventure, especially on a day like today. It's a nice rainy day here on my side of the mountain, but we are going to cross two mountain ranges. What makes this trip even better is that we're driving in the currently brand new Land Rover Defender. We're going to go over the Black Mountain Pass, or like it's known, the Swartberg Pass. It is spectacular, and I think this is the best vehicle to do it in. And I'm driving with motor journalist Johan van Tonder. Johan. Good morning. Thank you very much that I can drive with you, dude. Only a pleasure. Now, he's going to tell us a little bit more about this really, so far, spectacular vehicle, but he's also trained to drive the route that we're going to be driving. So, I hope you can enjoy this episode. It's totally different, but we're going through some amazingly beautiful landscape. Let's do it. Our road trip started in George, going all the way to Prince Albert. But to get there, we needed to go through Oatsworth. And along the way, you might just see some familiar sights if you are following my adventures. As we get closer to the mountains, the scenery although it is still raining, transforms into adventurous beauty. Heading towards the Swartberg Pass will also take you past the famous Kango Caves, as this is part of the country that is well known for many cave formations. Before we hit the mountain pass, a quick breakfast stop at Kurbe Sahat, the perfect refreshment stop before entering the mountain terrain. They are quite famous for their roesterkoek, which is a kind of a biscuit prepared on an open grilled fire. And you can combine it with anything delicious, a must for any traveler. they're working on the road the road is extremely muddy and slippery yes uh, they're busy with uh, road maintenance at the moment uh, of course this pass is more than 100 years old so it does need maintenance from time to time and uh, they're resurfacing the bottom part which means that they uh, resurfaced it with some new gravel but with the rain now it is extremely slippery but luckily we're in a 4x4 vehicle so it doesn't affect us that and, much and how is it handling so far because oh, just a little bit back there uh, we were slipping yeah we, you could definitely feel the vehicle slipping from side to side if we were in a light front wheel drive vehicle with this incline we probably would not be able to keep forward motion uh, but with the all-wheel drive of course it's um, it's a lot it's like having a cheat code on a game going over the surface like this with a Land Rover yeah. Swartberg Pass is one of the most spectacular passes in South Africa mm. Of course, built by Thomas Bain, the son of Andrew Geddes Bain. And didn't they do a lot of the, the mountain passes in South Africa? Yes, Father and Son Dio, most of the Cape mountain passes built by them, mm -hmm. um, of which this is probably the most spectacular. Yes. This is yes. an engineering feat. Uh, because they used uh, a method called dry stone walling, it was a very advanced type of Tetris because there's no okay. cement, yes. no mud, no nothing. It's yeah. dry stones that was packed on top of each other. This is such an amazing experience being here in this weather. There is a light drizzle falling here and I cannot keep my eyes open. And um, it is a little bit cold, gotta confess. But this vehicle that we're driving, I have to tell you, if I had to come and do this pass today with the mud and everything in my vehicle, 
I wouldn't feel as comfortable as being in this Land Rover Defender. The way that it handled this road, absolutely amazing. I, I know the Baines were very good at what they were doing, building mountain passes for vehicles and people to to travel the main reason was to connect areas with each other because you've got the Karua on this side and then you've got the claim Karua on that side but then after that you'll get the ocean side if you want to say it like that and for commerce and making doing business they had to get the agricultural things like sheep and wool and things to take it out to where it would be sold to the markets overseas wherever it went so building a pass like this is actually very very important but especially when it comes to the Swartberg Pass the Black Mountain Pass this one I would say would be one of the most daring ones that I've ever seen before and and hopefully when we go down we are very high up here when we go down I'll be able to show you just what a daring endeavor this was with today's rainy weather, I was kind of hoping for more open skies on the flip side of the pass, as this side is more drier and most spectacular. And luckily, I was right. In these mountains, the flora is Feinbos, and you will find the national flower, the Prutia, in all kinds of different variants here. We're stopping here at the entrance of a road going down to one of the valleys called Tomkas Kluwev, also known as the hell or in English the hell very hot and very isolated but amazingly beautiful the nature the the weather everything here is spectacular and the weather can change quickly it can go from good to bad most of the times it's very hot here I think you guys can hear how amazingly quiet it is Except for the wind, perfect silence. And as I was hoping, the sun did come out on the other side of the mountain. And now I can share with you this absolutely beautiful area of the road and the pass. actually going down below into that gorge that gorgeous gorge and to think that Thomas Bain built this whole mountain pass with convicts this is really really impressive um, the amount of effort that went into this but we're gonna be going down to a little town called Prince Albert where we're gonna have lunch and where our trip for today is gonna end but people this is spectacular and beyond.
bottom of the Swartberg Pass, the Black Mountain Pass. Johan, that was spectacular. We literally, coming down this mountain pass, we were on all kinds of, of terrain, like gravel, uh, uh, mud. Gravel, mud, stone, sand, water crossings. We went up, we went st down. Steep ascents, steep mm. descents. Um, so okay, it's, how, how it's not the, for the faint-hearted. How did the vehicle handle? The vehicle handled it in it's 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 the perfect vehicle for something like this mm. um it not only took us to one of the most spectacular passes it did this, it did so in taking us there in a, in the lap of luxury i mean we are sitting yes. in a vehicle that's got heated seats a heated steering wheel a cameras cameras all around self parking um, self parking sunroof uh it does it basically does everything um and this is it's different from the previous defender where the previous defender was a very utilitarian vehicle mm. a very basic vehicle you could uh, probably fix it with a wire and a piece of ply or uh, pliers or uh, a hammer or a hammer <laughs> uh, this this is not that this is a luxury vehicle mm. uh, this is just as capable if not more so than the old the old defender okay. And then naturally we got down the pass here to the river, which was pretty cool because... <laughs> because boys will be boys. And we, we saw the stream and we decided we'll speed up a bit and make a nice splash. And naturally we went through a couple of times because that was just too much fun. Yeah, boys will be boys. Uh, we keep on playing. It's just the toys that get more expensive. True. And now we're off to Prince Albert for lunch. We're driving on this gravel road and listen to that. It is the smoothest ride. This is so amazing. I am having the time of my life. I love this vehicle. This is good man, this is very good. And from Prince Albert, I'm saying goodbye to you guys. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Next time, we're gonna be doing four by fouring and that should be an adventure on its own. So remember to like, subscribe and share and I'll see you next time.